Good evening, family, and welcome to Wednesday Night Manor. I trust that you're all keeping healthy and safe. Amen. I hope you enjoy that song called Higher. That was recorded in 2010 at Sowers of the Word Church, and that's taken off our CD, Sound of Sowers. Amen. I hope you enjoy that. And yes, tonight we are here to lift the name of the Lord higher. We're here to exalt the name of the Lord. Amen. And we're going to go through Scripture this evening and see the wonders that God performs in His Word. But before we get there, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for another day. Thank you that this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have kept us and that you are still keeping us. Thank you to know that when we call upon your name, Father, that you hear and you answer us. I thank you, Lord, for every person under the sound of my voice tonight. Father, that you would meet them at the point of their need, wherever they find themselves. I pray, Spirit of the living God, that you would come and you would just envelop yourself round about us tonight. Thank you, Lord, that even as we sit around your word, Lord, we know that your word is quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. I thank you tonight that your word will not only encourage us, but challenge us tonight. And Lord, we give you honor. I pray tonight, Lord, that we will have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So come, Spirit of the living God, come and presence yourself with us. And we give you praise and we honor and we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope that you're all well. Amen. We're meeting on a different screen tonight. Amen. We're not live. But I trust tonight that even as we sit down the word of God, that you will not only be encouraged, but that you will be challenged tonight by the word of God. And the topic I'm going to be speaking on tonight is a topic that is very close to my heart. It's a topic that I believe in. I've seen God work. Amen. And it's simply called prayer. So you might think, why pray? Well, prayer answers where everything else fails. I know prayer has won many, many victories. And so tonight we're going to go through Scripture, and I hope that you're ready to go through Scripture with me. We're going to go down through the ages, and we're going to see how prayer has changed things and how God today still works wonders among us. Amen? So our Scripture reading tonight, our first Scripture reading is in Luke 11. And this is a question that the disciples asked Jesus. And I believe it's a very important question they asked Jesus. They've been with Jesus for a while, but they could have asked him any other question. But this is what they asked him. And we see in Luke chapter 11 from verse 1. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When he pray, say. And I believe that is so powerful, and we know the prayer, the Our Father prayer. You see, at that time, the disciples could have asked Jesus, because they've been with Jesus for a while. They've seen Jesus do miracles. They could have asked Jesus, Teach us how you made the blind I see, or teach us how you made the lame to walk. But they've asked Jesus, Teach us to pray. And I believe it's so important that as a child of God, we know how to pray. The Bible says it's the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man that availeth much. We find in Luke 18, God says, Jesus says, men ought always to pray and not faint. And how so much more now in the time where we find ourselves that it's a time where we are, should be praying, pray without ceasing. Amen. Men ought always to pray and not faint. And I'm going to go through a few scriptures this evening. Amen. And we're going to see how God has done wonders and worked wonders all because of prayer. And God answered prayer. Amen. So the first account we're going to look at is in Esther chapter 4 verses 16 to 17. In this account we see Esther standing in the gap for a nation. A nation that was about to be destroyed. And when the news came to Esther... Esther, the first thing Esther did, she wasn't worried. She didn't fear. All Esther said, go tell Mordecai, gather all the Jews together, and we're going to fast and we're going to pray. And she said, I will do the same with my handmaiden. And what Esther did, she called a three-day of prayer and fast. 
And what was the result of that? Her nation was saved, all because of prayer and fast. Then we see another account in Daniel chapter 3. Here we find three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We know the account. And these three Hebrew boys, they made up their mind that they will not compromise. They will not bow down to any other God but the one true God. And what was the result of them not compromising? They were then thrown into the fiery furnace. The king was angry. He said, throw them in the fiery furnace and turn up that heat seven times. But what the king didn't know, that there was a fourth man in the fire. You see, the king saw three men going in. But when he looked, he saw a fourth man. And he looked at his people and said, but did we not throw three men in the fire? How come there are four men walking around loose in the fire? They didn't smell like fire. They weren't burning. They were as they were. They went in. They came out the same. You see what happens when you begin to pray. And when you don't compromise and when you stand upon the word of God, that it doesn't matter what happens, you will not bow down to any other God because the God that you serve is alive and well. Amen. And we see the results of what happened in Daniel chapter 3. We find another account in 1 Samuel chapter 1, Hannah. Now Hannah, all Hannah wanted was a child. Hannah was barren. And Hannah used to go to the temple and pray. And the priest thought that Hannah is drunk because he couldn't make out what Hannah was saying. But all Hannah did was pray. She prayed and she wept before God. And she made a vow before God that, God, if you give me a child, I will give this child back to you. And we see the result of that in 1 Samuel chapter 2. We see how God has answered Hannah. And this was Hannah's prayer. And Hannah prayed, she said, There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. What a powerful prayer. When we get to that point where we say, There is none holy as the Lord. Neither is there any rock beside thee. Amen. And when our minds is focused on the one true God, on our Savior, our Redeemer, our helper, our provider, we see God do wonders among us. Amen. And then we find another account in the book of Acts chapter 12. And this I find so powerful because it was a time where this king was just killing left, right, and center. And he killed James. And because the king saw that this pleased the people, he took Peter and he threw Peter into prison. But the Bible says... But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So the minute Peter was thrown into prison, a prayer meeting was called. You see, and they came together in one accord with one heart, with one mind, one spirit, and they prayed without ceasing. And while the prayer meeting was going, God was busy working. He sent an angel and an angel released Peter. So when Peter came to Mary's door and he knocked, Rhoda came running and she thought, but I know that voice. That's Peter's voice. Rhoda couldn't believe it. While the prayer meeting was still going on, she went back and she said, but, but Peter's at the door. They couldn't believe what happened. They said, no, but it can't be. Peter's still in prison. You see how God answers prayer. Man, he will change circumstances. He will change laws and policies when we pray. Amen. And when we trust in this God that we serve. Today, yes, we find ourselves in times where we are not certain what's going to happen. You might find yourself in isolation right now. You might find yourself not knowing where the next piece of bread is going to come from. You don't know if you've got to go back to work, when you're going back to work. There are so many questions. We are bombarded by the media with so many negative things. And so many people are fearing, even Christians that's been saved for years are fearing. But the word of God says, I haven't given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You see, when our mind is stayed on him, our mind has to be stayed on him. He will keep you in perfect peace. 
It doesn't matter what happens round about you. Yes, you might be tossed to and throw. Yes, things might come your way. But when your mind is stayed on him, he will keep you in perfect peace. You see, it's one thing quoting scripture and just leaving it. But it's another thing quoting scripture and know that the word of God is true and that you know it's going to work. And you're going to see God turn and do wonders among us. Amen. So now is not the time for us as a church now to sit down and to think and see how is it going to happen? When is this thing going to happen? When is it going to be over? Now is the time, now more than ever, we need to intensify in our prayer life. And you might find yourself awake at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. You might find yourself where you cannot sleep at all. What the best time it is to be in the presence of a living God. You don't have to say anything. God knows your thoughts. He knows your heart. Sometimes you just got to be still and know that he is God. Amen. Because our prayer closet conserves our relationship with God. It hems in every raw edge. It tucks up every flowing and entangling garment. And it girds up every fainting loin. 1 Peter 1 verse 13 says this, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. We've got to gird up the loins of our mind. The Bible says keep your mind stayed on him. You've got to renew your mind daily. It's not just today and tomorrow. You said I've renewed it yesterday. Today it's a different thing. It's got to be a constant thing. Keep your mind stayed on him, stayed on the word of God. And you might say, but how do I do that? Begin to quote scripture. Begin to declare the word of God. He's placed his word in your mouth. His word is like a two-edged sword. Amen. It is sharper than a two-edged sword. It will pierce everything where it goes. Amen. So begin to trust and know that when you speak the word of God, something's going to happen. Amen. I'm sure I now most of you know what took place in history on the 6th of August, 1945, in the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That day, an atomic bomb, which they called Little Boy, was dropped on the cities. It exploded with an energy of approximately 15 kilotons. The explosion wiped out 90% of the city. Months after the blast, people were still affected by the blast. People who were exposed to the, radi the radi radiation developed cancer five, six years later. There were birth defects due to the radiation of that blast, and it also affected brain development. This was months, months after the blast. Now you might be thinking, but why are you talking about the bombing? Well, to me, Prayer is like an atomic bomb we release to destroy the works of the enemy. You see, it doesn't only affect our generation, but it will also affect the generations to come. I'm sure there's some of you sitting there thinking, but my grandmother has prayed for me. And that was generations and generations ago. And you sitting here as a result of that prayer. Amen. And your prayer, what we pray today, is going to affect the next generation. So we cannot take prayer lightly. You see, it's got to have an effect when we pray. Because when we pray, something happens in the atmosphere. Something takes place in the atmosphere when we call upon the name of the Lord. So I want to encourage us tonight, church, begin to intensify. Yes, you're praying, but begin to intensify your prayer. Stay in your prayer closet and begin to pray and begin to pray like never, ever before. Because the time is now where the church of God needs to arise. Amen. And we see in scripture how prayer has affected things round about them. For example, in Hezekiah, Hezekiah prayed and an angel slew 185,000 Sennacherib's army in one night, all because of prayer. Daniel's praying opened to him the visions of prophecy and helped him to administer the affairs of a mighty kingdom. But it not only did that, it also sent an angel to shut the mouths of the lions. Elijah prayed over a dead child, and that child came to life. Peter 
He kneeled down and prayed beside dead Dorcas. And what happened? She opened her eyes and she sat up. Elisha's praying brought famine or harvest to Israel. As he prayed, so it was. Isaiah's praying carried the shadow of the sun back 10 degrees on the dial of Ahaz. What powerful things has happened because of prayer. Hebrews 11 verse 32 to 34, this is what it says. And what shall I say more? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, all because of prayer. And Church of God, we find ourselves in a position where we need to pray now more than ever. It's not a time to sit down and to worry what's going to happen and to be moved by what we see and by what we hear. It's a time where we need to be in our closet and begin to pray. And while we're praying, knowing that God is working on our behalf. You see, it's where you are dwelling at the moment. The Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You see, where are you abiding? You know, in that dwelling place, that's your safety, that's your refuge, that's your strength. Whatever you need tonight is found in that dwelling place. Stay in that dwelling place. How are you occupying your time? What are you doing? Are you worrying more than praying? Are you thinking of the next thing? Are you thinking of what's going to happen tomorrow? Or are you praying and trusting and knowing God that He is in control? You see, the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord. So right now we're in a waiting period. But it doesn't stop there. It says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. You see, we are in a waiting period. And while we are waiting, we are gathering strength. Amen. Because this thing is only for a season. So what we do in the season is what matters now. When we come out of the season, how are we going to come out? Are we going to come out stronger than we were when we went in? Or are we going to come out the same way? Let me encourage you tonight, brother and sisters. Make use of this time. Trust God. Believe his word. Speak his word. Make use of what he has given you. You see, the Bible says that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There's a greater one living on the inside of you. The same power that raised Christ from the dead is alive in you. But you've got to believe it and you've got to know it. So begin to speak life over every situation. God asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? And he said, thou knowest, Lord. And God said to him, prophesy over these dead bones. Prophesy. And I say to you tonight, brother and sister, what is your situation tonight? Prophesy over that situation. Prophesy and see what God can do. Prophesy and begin to speak life over your children. Begin to speak life in your business. Begin to speak life over your family. Speak life. And you begin to see how God work on our behalf. He's the same Yesterday, today, and forever. Times has changed. Seasons change. But God never changed. So tonight, I trust that as we've gone through Scripture, go back to Scripture. The Word of God is full of nourishment. Go back to the Word of God and speak the Word of God because He's your refuge and He's your strength. And He'll be your very present help in time of trouble. Though the earth be removed, Though viruses may come, God will help us, and that right early. All we got to do is know that this God that we serve is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen.
I trust tonight that as we listen to the word of God, that we would be challenged to increase our prayer time. It's a time for the church of God to come together as one. Forget about who's doing what. Forget about our own agendas. But this is God's agenda, that we begin to pray and pray like never before. You see, the world is looking to the church for answers. And when the church steps out, when we step out, and we walk past people and our shadows fall on someone. It's got to touch and heal the next person. Not because of you, but because of the power that has risen and that's alive on the inside of you. So I hope tonight that you were encouraged. Get your family together every night. Have family also. Pray with your children. What a time to be with your kids to invest the word of God in them. So when they come out of this. They will be stronger than what they were when we started. Amen. Shall we pray this evening? Heavenly Father, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you, Lord, that your word encourages us and enriches us and challenges us. And I pray tonight, my God, that we will not just be hearers of your word, but God, that we will take your word and be doers of your word. Lord, that we will increase in our prayer time with you. Father, that you would speak your voice, Lord, loud and clear, my God, that we will hear what the Spirit of God is saying. I pray tonight, my God, for each and every single person tonight under the sound of my voice. Father, you know them by name. You know their thoughts afar off. You know their hearts. You know their desires. You know their needs, my God. You've called them. And I pray tonight, Father, wherever they find themselves, Lord, that you will wrap yourself round about them. Lord, that they would know that the God that they serve is alive and well. Lord, that when they call upon your name, Lord, that you hear and you answer. Father, thank you that you've been keeping us. Lord, the fact that we are still here today tells me how good you've been, tells me of your faithfulness. And so, Lord, we just want to worship you and we just want to adore you. We honor you, Father. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you that you provided. Thank you that we are in good health. Thank you that we can stand upon your word and know that when we speak your word, Lord, that you work and you move wonders on our behalf. We give you praise and we honor and we glorify you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen.